And if anybody want to request to come up and speak, please do so. Please do not wait until I say we're about to wrap up and then everybody, and everybody want to raise their hand or request to come up. Uh, request to come up throughout the show. NAACP, they had their awards. I think it was Saturday night or Sunday night. One of them damn nights, honey. But your favorite, one of your favorite people, <laughs> Brittany Griner, <laughs> she received an emotional standing ovation at the NWCP Image Awards. She Let me debunk on... something. Mm -hmm. Image Awards is not part of the NAACP. It's a separate corporate entity. And the way it works is you need 800 judges. 400 of them only have to be NAACP members, and the other 400 are from the industry. Guess who's got more Image Awards than any other person? Um, you said, um, what's that director name? Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's got more Image Awards than anybody else. Now figure that out. So what happens is you don't have folk who are actually impacted with the votes voting power, they're just entitled to one half of the 800 judges on any given category. And most of the time, we don't even bother. So you have 400 industry types getting together outside of the platform to determine who's going to get an image award. Now, the charter says it's supposed to improve the image and self-esteem of black folk or colored or Negro, depending on how you want to, what era you're in. So I got nominated twice. Didn't win, but got nominated. And um, frankly, my studio was trying to keep me from getting an award because they were trying to kill the show when it was in year two. <clears throat> but that's another thing. Here's the deal. The image award that was given away then, that was 2000. Um, Several of the musical awards, one of them had MF mentioned in the number 27 times, the B word mentioned 17 times, and MF seven times. That's how you, I remember it, 7, 17, and 27. What the hell is that doing getting an image award? But you see, to give the NAACP a little slack. The Image Awards are a totally separate corporate entity. The only thing in common is the NAACP moniker. Mm -hmm. Well, Brittany Griner and her wife, they took to the stage and she said she want to, you know, we are truly just so thankful to all the people, many of whom are Black women and Black-led organization who fight so hard to bring um, Brittany Griner home. The couple was introduced by Queen Latifah, who was a host, who applauded them for their resilience. Um, so she got a standing ovation. But what... Guess she... what Queen Latifah is. Right, she, she is, is to bring a lesbian. bring her girlfriend, a wife up there where I lived in Ojai, California all the time. <laughs> um... So the big highlight of the night was Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade. They they dedicated their award to their that quote unquote, was extremely sick too. Very sick. Um, Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Wade. Um, so he went on quoted saying, "I am intentional when I use my platform. I recognize what I have been given." and what it is my job to uplift the voices of others and share my access and resources. Uh, Wade opened the speech by dedicating the award to his 15 year old daughter, Zaya, who is transgender and was recently legally allowed to change her gender along with her name on all of her um, birth certificates and you know records. Um, Zaya, as your father, all I've wanted to do is get right. I've sat back and watched how gracefully, gracefully you've taken on the public scrutiny. And even though it's not easy, I've watched you walk out of the house every morning as yourself. I want to scroll down to what 
Gabrielle Union was saying. Um, in her portion of the address, Union added a powerful push to stand in a new era of activism, a new era that demands our collective answer to one simple question. Will we fight for some or will we fight for all our people? Even as we demand equality at the top of our lungs, we consistently fail to extend our advocacy to protect some of our most vulnerable amongst us. I guess that would be LGBT that boy, or trans. That boy needed to be raised to grow up and be a man and defend his people. As it is, he is being raised to grow up so he can be defended by a lot more manly members of his race who don't mind being what having swingers and bouncers means. <laughs> yeah, and those were some rumors that they were like that. Um, to an emotional crowd, Wade into his speech saying that he was proud to be chosen as Zaya's father. Zaya, you've made me a better human just simply by being who you were born to be a baby girl, Zaya Wade. So, baby, thank you for showing the world what courage looks like. So that is I a new face it, of courage. I call it being a coward and shirking your responsibility. That's what I call it. And I don't care who gets it. It's his right to do it in America, but it's still my right to call it under the First Amendment what it is. It's cowardice. Dwayne Wade, though, his what he's what um he and that boy. Because at the age that boy is, he ought to have been taught some manliness and courage and bravery. It's a disgrace right. when you have these people running around showing such a lack of respect for their obligations. Always about what they want. That's why we have gone to hell here. And one of the things I'm going to do as mayor is in part a sense of purpose, duty, honor, and responsibility. A cause to the people. When people get told that they have no cause, just do what you want. Mm -hmm. It does not work out well. Now, uh, one of the things I did not like also what she was saying in her and Gabrielle Union and her part of the uh, um, acceptance speech, um, she used the word intersection. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull up the whole damn thing. Um, and Again, every time when you use the word intersection or intersectionality, right? For me, that's an automatically red sign that you are eliminating, you know, one group of people for another. Um, oh, here it go. She says that let's just name a couple of hard truth. First, the intersection of Black rights and the rights of the LGBTQAI, trans, and gender nonconforming people continues to be rough. That's a huge understatement. Even as we demand equality at the top of our lungs, we consistently fail to extend our advocacy to protect some of our most vulnerable among us. And second, Black trans people are being targeted, terrorized, and hunted in this country every day, everywhere. And there's rarely a whisper about it. We honestly don't approach this work as activists or leaders as much as we do as parents. Parents who love our children and will do any and, and will do whatever the hell we can to keep them seen and secure and safe. Yeah. May I point out something? Mm -hmm. uh, you ever notice the debris that's typically in the middle of a busy intersection? Glass and broken bits of metal and stuff. Yes. Why do you think all that debris is in the middle of the intersection? Ooh, it's being pushed there or something? No, because intersections are frequent locations for accidents and collisions and problems, right? Oh, okay. So, yeah, intersectional uh, is frequently the intersection of what they're talking about is a frequent location for accidents, in mischance. Great and way of putting way, it. Why the hell should we advocate for them when they're trying to co-opt and destroy every damn thing some of us have died for? Right. Let them go do their own thing. Because you see, the cop out about it is, is it's a cult. And when they become part of the cult, 
then they no longer have to be black, African American, black, Afro American, black, Negro, or colored. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, they've been co opting all those words. They're trying to destroy the fabric of society. And see, the bottom line is they're about five, six percent of the country's population, seven and a half percent if you. And the trans bit is less than a half percent of the country's population. So they're trying to act like they're this super majority. Well, maybe they're majority, uh, the majority component of that audience. And by the way, I have to give you a little spoiler. The NAACP Image Awards are scripted, and they've got people standing around with signs, applaud. And then they take all of the cute folk and they move them around, all of the extras that they bring in. Okay, you, 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 and you come with me, sit here. And then they pose them for the next something. So you see all these beautiful people in the audience when it's not. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't look that way in person and it's getting choreographed. They've got these scrolling uh, words in various places as to what they want the audience to say or do. And the audience politely applauds or stands up and stand up standing ovation. You know, wow, okay, sit down. You know, and it's like orchestrated. So it's all Hollywood. It's fake. And as a matter of fact, they either do it in Hollywood, in LA, or out in Pasadena at their auditorium out there. Um, I want to go to Adam and then MV. And anybody else who want to request to come out, please do so. Can MV go first? I, I got some pizza that came in. Thanks for having <laughs> <Okay>. me <up. laughs> All right, I'll come back to you. Go ahead, MV. Hi, it's me again. <laughs> um, I just want to say that we can't, we have to be brave at this time in um, human history. If we are silent, then everything that they um, want to accomplish, they will be able to accomplish because of our silence. Our ancestors were brave. We're here because of them. And I think they would be highly insulted if they saw that we were complacent and that somehow we were falling for um, the muddying of the waters by like the Democrats. They're trying to throw every, every um, um, how do you call it, marginalized group into the equation just so that they can keep distracting us and they've allowed them to hijack our fight. Like, why can't it just be the fight of African Americans? Why are we distorting it and trying to to make it to, to add more things onto it so that people are confused? We need to stick to the facts. The facts are that our black skin has been um, um, discriminated against. It's systemic. Um, um, discrimination. We ha we lack economic empowerment because we not only lack the knowledge, but we also were disenfranchised after slavery. There are so many issues that are still on the table that have not been remedied, and yet they want to move on to something else. We can't allow it. A lot of these schools, and especially the elite schools where these rich celebrities send their children, they're they're hijacking these children's minds. It's obvious. Look at how. There's such a small portion of them, but yet there's a large portion of them that are doing this, that are making these moves and, and taking their breasts off. This is insanity and we can't allow them to muddy the waters. We need to stick to the facts. And, and, and every time they try to throw other things in it, we need to say, no, we're sticking to the facts. The facts are your brown skin is what has been um, discriminated against. Let's talk about that first. Well said. Um, I don't know. Adam, Nicely said. Nicely said. Um, I don't know if Adam, if you're ready to go, but um... oh yeah, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I was just finishing up that slice there. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Dana, Judge, definitely an honor to be back with with y'all, and uh, definitely uh, just wanted to speak to what uh, you were talking about earlier with uh, bu bu bureaucracy taking its cut. I think it's uh, 11 cents per, per tax dollar that goes to like for, toward education that actually gets to the school, which is like, you know, 11 cents after all that bureaucracy because they all got to get. Um. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Oh yeah, sorry. Where did I cut off? Get cut off? Sorry. Uh, democracy something. Democracy something. <laughs> uh, no, I was talking about uh the bureauc- bureaucracy. Yes, that that bureaucracy. bureaucracy. Yeah. I'm sorry, bureaucracy. Yeah. 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 The the bureaucracy getting its cut in regards to some of these programs and monies that come from the federal government. And, uh, you know, Senator Rand Paul and I think others were talking about, you know, disbanding well, Ron Paul himself back in the day, talking about the Department of Education and disbanding it because, you know, like I believe it's each dollar that's intended for school funding, about 11 cents of that dollar gets to the school, you know, when it gets to the actual school. So that's about like, everybody just taking their cut along the way uh, with all this bureaucracy. And I understand there's people got to get paid, you know, that, that allocate this money and this and that, but I think it's just like too much. You know, that's, I think that's a big issue there. Just to speak to what you were talking about earlier with bureaucrats taking their cut. Right. Right. Um, all right. So stay right there for a second. Um, that Nika, Hello, uh, good afternoon, y'all. How y'all doing? I uh, thank you for pronouncing my name right too. Um, yeah. So, like, I just want to say, um, the NAACP they represented colored people very well this weekend. <laughs> so, this organization is still calling certain people they want to help out or whatnot colored people. They did that. They did a phenomenal job with their presentation of. Uh, bull crap this weekend. Great, that is the that's totally indicative of what a colored person is in 2023, whatever the fudge they was talking about. Uh, you know, and how they how they awarded people and what they decided to reward and award, all that type of stuff, right? So, um, yeah, I, I know y'all probably covered that already. Uh, Joe Biden, look at him, he gonna come Monday morning. Hey, he said, look, do I look like a dumb white boy? What do you think? That man crazy. That man said, I'm not just a dumb white boy, whatever the fudge that means. He just a sick, he a sick fella. He a sick fella. He probably can't, I wouldn't even trust Joe, but I don't even think he could drive himself to the store and pick up some cereal, honestly. So, um, whatever he's saying, I don't even think he could do that by himself. Like, I want, you know, he like one of them. Like if your grandma or granddaddy got Alzheimer's or something, you got to make sure you lock the door before you leave so they don't sneak out. He like that. For real, for real. Like I know what dementia is. Um, just And just, just in general, um, yeah, man, I don't even know what the – I don't know what Elon Musk did. I mean, I guess all he do is just continue to be a rich African-American, isn't he? He's just a rich African-American, ain't he? That's what he is. So I don't know. <laughs> It's just a bunch of weird stuff. This this whole country is just weird as hell lately. And uh, yeah, I don't have nothing to say, man. Y'all, y'all have a good one. All right, you can mute up. You can stay up. Um, I was just about to mention that article. I don't know what happened to the judge. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll hop back in. But yeah, the art which was mentioned with Joe Biden. Um, it says Biden ripped for I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid. A comment at a Black History Month event. Um, he said he is both. And this was, just comes on the heels of last week when he referred to the Maryland governor, Wes Moore, um, who is black as a boy. So it says President Joe Biden. Um, President Biden made controversial declaration during a Black History Month event Monday saying oh wait one second uh let me bring him back up as the uh um i gotta bring the judge back up yeah that's jo- that's joe biden uh the kkk called him the ducktail dixie crat you know yeah that's okay him. so it said at um at a white house reception biden appeared to hit governor ron DeSantis. When he declared, it is important to say from the White House for the entire country to hear history matters, history matters and black history matters. I can't just choose to learn what we want to know. We learn what we should know. We have to learn everything, the good, the bad, the truth and who we are as a nation. Um, But it was another statement from the event that went viral when Biden was boosting about his knowledge of the divine nine 
historically black fraternities and sororities. Um, he says, I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid. And the crowd laughed. I know where the power is. You think I'm joking. I learned a long time ago about the divine nine. So I guess he was saying the power is held within the black fraternities and sororities. The boule. Excuse me. What divine nine? That's what he said. What nine? <laughs> there are historical there are black fraternities and sororities. There are only eight. Is that including the Masons? That's not a fraternity. Maybe they were. I don't know. It's I don't not. Know. Look, look. See, you even have to talk about, are you talking about Prince Hall Lodge? Or are you talking about other potential lodges? I have no idea what this man's talking about. See, I don't know. That doesn't either. He does not either. There are eight sororities and fraternities that are the original ones. I, I'm not saying in the last 10, 15 years, some upstarts might not have jumped in there, but there are only eight. And they got created more than 100 years ago for the purpose of fighting segregation. And you had four sororities, four fraternities, and their purpose was to look like party organizations. Somebody and just tweeted be dealing with something else. Wait a minute. Somebody just tweeted that it is not load up five that doesn't sci -fi? That, that, no uh uh that's the ninth. No, I don't I'm know. talking about I don't do that fraternity sorority shit anyway. I did. I was dean of pledges back in nineteen sixty seven uh, for the alphas. Alpha Delta chapter Los Angeles. And by the way, anybody interested, I invented step had my pledge line doing it. And there were four fraternal participants in the frat games and four sorrel partip, uh, participants in the proceedings. There weren't nine. I mean, honey, we honestly, Stephen, that one, I believe, that came one, from African dance. No, no, no. that No, it didn't. <laughs> I invented it. Me and Big Bob Cole and the line we had and we based it on a brother that was a cheerleader at Dorsey High, Maurice Duncan, I think his name was. Mm. Not Duncan, Maurice. I, it'll come to me in a bit. We had it, and it was frat games at L.A. City. I mean, uh, Cal State, L.A. We had all of the pros were in the frats, and we had had these games for eight weeks, and it was during spring break, and a lot of folks that were from L.A. were there visiting for that, and they took the stuff back south to the fraternities. That was 56 years ago. Anyway, no, 51 years ago. No. Okay. 50, well, whatever. I, 50, I, 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 yeah, fifty-six years ago. Yeah. That's fine. That's nice. You went been and stepped in. Mm -hmm. I was never part of no sorority or none of that. Well, um, I will but... remember the frat. But the point is, there are only eight. There is not nine. There's an upstart something that jumped in here, fifteen, mm -hmm. twenty years ago. And by the way, I like the reference to ducktail because that's what that fool was wearing the first time I saw him in nineteen seventy-two outside of the state capitol building in Dover, Delaware, where I was doing some research for a Washington, D.C. think tank I was interning at. Yeah. And he was uh, a I racist then, and he talked about him knowing the Negro, and he was disappointed that Delaware didn't go with the South since it held slaves and should have had the balls to go with the South instead of being cowed by being so close to D.C. and New York. Yeah, I remember it. Um, before I get, go back to Dat and Adam, um, Champ, you're new. Um, you can unmute and say what you got to say. Then I'm going to go to Dat, then Adam. I think that was the rotation of the hands. Champ? Oh, yeah. I was just uh, uh, adding in that what people refer to now as the D Divine Nine would be adding Iota uh, to the Divine Nine. You know, they came after the war, like uh, Judge Joe Brown said, and they felt like we weren't representing what we were supposed to represent. You know, I spoke to some when I was, I was in undergrad and, you know, they told me how they were founded and the reason they were founded. And they just felt like, you know, the black fraternities weren't doing what they were supposed to do. So they came to save the day. Clearly that's not the case. So, but it, it is the iotas that uh, they're talking about that came later. Okay, but why is he focusing on divine nine as if that's the right. part of black history? <laughs> right. 
Am I missing something? <laughs> who cares about the divine nine? He's a buffoon who likes to grandstand and throw stuff out like he knows something. Right. Somebody put that in his little cue cards. Yeah, the that's nine like nine. he bragged about what he did in law school and then found out he got jacked around for being a plagiarist. Um. All right, that and then Adam. Oh, yeah, he threw that Divine Nine uh, stuff in there because it's a buzzword. So he knows with a certain demographic within the party that votes for him and people like him, he know that that's a he makes certain people feel acknowledged. So he's going to throw that out there. Yeah, you know, isn't his vice president a member of the Divine Nine or whatever? Isn't that one of the big reasons why, even though she did call him racist during the middle of the debate, I remember that they could scrub it all they want. Kamala did call that man a racist at the middle of the debate, but somehow she wanted to be his VP and his whole she's one of she's one of y'all. You know, you know how they they just got their wranglers and they look at the, the Democratic Party. Look, no offense to anybody who's a part of that stuff. Those are the Negro wranglers for the most part. They wrangle the Negroes to vote for us a desired effect that that particular liberal democratic party does and they that's what they do so they you know he i make y'all feel seen see look at what i say i hired i got a black uh supreme court justice i got a black spokesperson for the white look at what i do even though these people really don't serve us no purpose and we can question up i can question all that katanji brown ladies judgment man this lady is lenient on pedophiles. Like, let's be clear about this. Not, I didn't. It's not because I said it. It's because what she do. Th th this her judgments, right, Mr. Judge Brown? Am I tripping? You're not tripping. And let me give you a fact, or it is interesting. Camilla Harris is not the first member of a black fraternity or sorority to be in the position of vice president. That was tall bald-headed, blue-eyed, white guy, Hubert Humphrey, who was vice president for Lyndon Baines Johnson. I met big brother Hubert Humphrey. He got made alpha up in Minnesota back in the 30s, and for a white boy to make a black frat back then was something, and he re-upped in the 40s. So he also was the Democratic Party candidate for president against Tricky Dick Nixon the first go-around. He lost, unfortunately, but She's not the first in her position it's from one of the Greek, black Greek organizations. But the difference is she's just a party person. Um, she hasn't done the other stuff. I'm going to go to Adam. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask uh, you, Dana, and Judge Joe Brown about uh, what they thought about uh, what DeSantis did with uh, in regards to uh, basically them trying to squeeze in uh, queer theory or trans theory into African American studies down here in Florida and DeSantis squashing that and being like, no. And then, uh, I guess, uh, this uh, black uh, organization down in Miami, like, you know, that was calling him, you know, racist at first for, for it. Like, they didn't understand what, what, what the actuality of it was that they were trying to sneak in the trans theory and uh, queer theory into African-American studies. And uh, they apologized to him like, hey, <laughs> our bad, you know, like we didn't know. And uh, I just wanted to know what you guys thought about that. They, they knew what they were doing. It's just that, you know, you got one side that go to the extreme, want to bring in all this LGBT queer because they don't have a history. They don't. You, they don't have a history LGBTQAI. Um, they, they may end up having a history 50 years from now, but that's the extreme. And then you have the other extreme with DeSantis. He said, oh, no, you want to implement studies, particularly gender conforming or LGBT studies. Well, we're going to wipe out the whole thing. Not only the LGBT or CRT, you, we're gonna, you can't talk about Black Panthers. You know, you can't talk about this. You can't talk about this author or this poet. So he's going to a whole nother evangelistic Christian extreme. So you have two extremes. So I, I, I agree with DeSantis on one whole, but he's an extremist. And I definitely disagree with the other side because yeah, you do this, it's like a, I call it shadow band. And it's like, you bring in this, you, you want to promote uh, African-American quote unquote studies, but then you want to slide in this LGBTQ intersectionality bullshit. 
So, you know, both of them are to the extreme. My thing is, how about start relying on a public education system and start educating your children independently? How about this one? I support people's rights, their First Amendment right in particular, to speak out on certain things. I don't necessarily support the platforms or things they say. Now, I didn't march much. I didn't demonstrate much. I did other things. I was militant. And that was back in the 60s. And I've done as much as anybody out there right now toward the cause, but I'll be damned if I did that so somebody can pervert the whole process and destroy the nuclear family with alacrity and a free pass to do so, to take my, let's say, granddaughter and turn her into a pervert. Uh, that's not what I did it for. They're on their own. It's kind of like you can see a picture from World War II of Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of England. You can see FDR, President of the United States. And you can see Joe Stalin, Premier of the Soviet Union. And they're all collaborating to get rid of Adolf and Tojo. Well, when they did that, they weren't everybody's ally anymore in the U.S., Great Britain, and uh, the Soviet Union had a whole bunch of 50 years, 45 years, 40 years worth of Cold War and some nuclear weapons poised to destroy the world. It doesn't work like that. They're on their own when it comes down to that policy of theirs. I'll support their right to say it and be vigorously against them carrying it out. Get your freak on in your bedroom, but keep it in there. We don't put ours out in the streets. Keep yours out of the streets. And we definitely don't put it in the school room. Keep it out of the school room. Uh, don't judge him, Joe Brown.